Hi everybody, welcome to Kachis Lake in Kittitas County between Ellensburg, my hometown, and Snoqualmie Pass. The nearest logging town is Easton. And I'm not far from Interstate 90 and it's a gloomy fall-like morning. It's 58 degrees here on a Monday morning in late August. Love it! I love the cool temperatures. You're looking at the lake, but what you're really looking at underneath the lake, I mean, can you get rid of the water? There is a major geologic fault right here. It's called the Straight Creek Fault. And it was active, producing earthquakes between 50 and 35 million years ago. It has not produced an earthquake. This hand is showing the trace of the fault has not produced an earthquake in the last 35 million years. And if you want to know more about the evidence we have for that, I guess you'll need to tune in to the Eocene live streams that we've done and also that we will be doing this winter. The evidence we have that the Straight Creek Fault was a San Andreas Fault-like structure is that the bedrock on the eastern shore of this lake versus the western shore of this lake do not match. Why not? I'll give it away right away. The bedrock on the eastern shore of Kachis Lake here, you find it again on this side a hundred miles to the north. There's been a total of 100 miles of horizontal offset with a bunch of earthquakes on this Straight Creek Fault when it was active. The lighting is not ideal this morning, but we're going to try to make the best of a situation and try to highlight a couple things that Michael Eddy has been writing out in the last few years. Thanks for joining us. So this is a nice vantage point on the south tip of the lake to look at these bedrock layers. Let me zoom in for you a little bit and just give you a quick scan. There's a Forest Service road that I'm going to follow right along this eastern shore. I've never been up it before, uh, but I have a hunch that there'll be some interesting bedrock up this drive to the north. There's a few private homes tucked into the trees. There's a group campsite. Uh, but I really am interested in this ridge. And on the other side of this ridge, on the back side of this ridge, you're looking east now. On the eastern side of this ridge, is Cleellum Lake and Roslyn and the mining town of Cleellum as well as the mining town of Roslyn. And the bedrock of this ridge is uh, newly interesting to me. Let's focus. Do you see that there's a bunch of rock layers there? Come on, focus, baby. Those rock layers there are part of something called the Silver Pass Volcanics. I know very little about the Silver Pass Volcanics, except that there are some lavas that are bedded, and the bedding, let me zoom out, the bedding of the Silver Pass Volcanics sit like this. Pretty steep angle to those Silver Pass Volcanics. The age of them, a series of, I guess, rhyolites, maybe some andesites, uh, are the age is 51 million years old. So now we realize that the Silver Pass volcanics are interbedded with the Swak Formation, which run from 59 to 49 million years ago. And more importantly here, and I'm starting to learn the details from Jeff Tepper and Mike Eddy and others who've done some work on the Silver Pass volcanics, is that this is where the volcano was. In other words, we're right at the source or we're near the source of the Silver Pass volcanic action. And as we get further and further away from this particular spot, 51 million years ago, we find deposits that were blasted through the air or fell out of the sky, that sort of thing. So steeply dipping Silver Pass volcanics, brand new to me, but that's the story here. And I know that Jeff Tepper and students have been up at these outcrops recently collecting some new samples so that they, get, 
so that they can get some detailed geochemistry. We do not have Silver Pass volcanics on the other side of the lake. I guess I'm having a thought right away this morning. Were there a bunch of Silver Pass volcanics on this side of the lake that have since been sent north? And if so, can we find the equivalent of the Silver Pass volcanics, which is a pretty thick pile, pretty hefty pile of, of lavas here on the eastern shore, since we have to cross the Straight Creek Fault up by Baker, or maybe even in British Columbia, are there more of these Silver Pass volcanic layers? And if there are, has anybody studied them? And if anybody studied them, what name do the Silver Pass volcanics have over there? Because I'm sure they're not called the Silver Pass volcanics on that side. Wow, an original thought right here this morning. We'll see if there's any breadcrumbs to follow there. But this ridge is not 100% Silver Pass volcanics, which again are steep, uh, dipping steeply. If I scan a little bit further, again, the light is wrong. I probably should have come out in the afternoon now that I'm here. Oh well. There's more layers of lava making up this face. Again, I'm still, you can hear the lapping of uh, Kachis. So we're due east of Lake Kachis, and you can see this from I-90. These are Tianaway basalt lavas, the capping lavas. So for those that remember, I've talked a fair amount about the Tianaway basalt eruptions, uh, but quite often the capping lavas are gone, and all we have are the underground feeder dikes that we can study over at Blewett Pass. Well here, we don't really have the feeder dikes on display. We have the lavas that flooded this area 49 million years ago. And according to the work that's been done up in this area, the Tianaway lavas are dipping at a shallower angle. So, what do we have in this ridge in the crappy light? We have Silver Pass Volcanics, 51, dipping steeply, and then an unconformity, and sitting above, Tianaway basalt lavas that are dipping at a less, uh, a, a less steep angle than the Silver Pass Volcanics. The main message, tectonically, about both the Silver Pass Volcanics, 51, and the Tianaway basalts, 49, is that we have these lavas here due to a break in a subducting plate between 51 and 48 million years ago. And hot mantle got shallower into the crust than it usually does, triggered a bunch of melting, and yes, you're looking at some chalice magmas here. And you're like, wow, you really lost me there at the end. Well, again, uh, we've had programs this spring talking about the chalice magmas and how this works. I guess I won't start from scratch with every one of these field videos. I'll just assume that you need to do your homework before you start. Wouldn't you expect, since there's thick Tianaway basalt here, that there was more Tianaway basalt that went west of here? And it's not here now, but was some of that Tianaway basalt, or at least some feeder dikes set north. Wow, interesting he says to himself, sitting by himself on a log. Pathetic, really. Now, speaking of the log, I just happen to have Field Guide 49 from the GSA, from the Seattle 2017 Annual Meeting, edited by Ralph Hagrood and Harvey Kelsey. Mike Eddy and others. And Mike led a field trip with others uh, to this spot, to this very spot where I'm sitting. And let me describe, let me read to you what uh, the horse is telling us. What?
On the high ridge to the east, the angular unconformity between the Swak and Tianwei formations is visible. Here, rocks belonging to the Silver Pass volcanic member of the Swak formation dip steeply to the east and are overlain by gently dipping basalt flows of the Tianwei formation. Both units are folded, part of a regional syncline, probably because of the motion of the Straight Creek Fall. Aha! So there's a regional syncline here. Where's the other half of the syncline? If Mike is inferring that there's a folding of some of these layers, in other words, the dipping of these layers is in part due to the motion on the, on the Straight Creek Fault, isn't that even more reason to think that there should be some of these guys uh, further north up by Shuxon? However, this structure can be traced into a gentle syncline within the Columbia River basalts indicating that there's been some younger folding as well. The Silver Pass volcanic member is a thick package of rhy rhyolites, dacite, and andesite. Eruption date from one rhyolite, 51.364 plus or minus 0 0.029. So those are some sticky explosive layers that are up there in the Silver Pass. Got a little bit more light here, so let me give you a decent shot. Okay, well, as promised, I've worked my way up the east shore of Kachis Lake. Um, have never been up here before. Uh, bedrock is scarce, heavy forest cover, and there is kind of a glacial history here. Not kind of, there is a glacial history here with each of these very long valleys filled with water. Uh, but I have found a spot that has some interest. Let's take a look. Maybe you can see the lake water down in there. Maybe you can. Okay. So you're looking west across the lake. You're starting to look north. And as we said uh, at the beginning of this video, everything on the west side of the lake is a uh, is a hundred miles north, right? So stuff that should be directly across the lake is 100 miles north, or another way of saying that is that stuff that is currently directly across the lake should be 100 miles further to the south, right? That stuff was originally down by, I don't know, Adams or something, and has been moved this far north. So we've got the idea that there's a mismatch in bedrock from one side of the lake to the other. Is there something here where I have parked bedrock-wise, that is something different than the Silver Pass Volcanics, because again, we're still on the east side of the lake. The answer is yes. And you're like, okay, I don't, I don't know what that is, you say, and maybe I say too. But there's three things I want to show you here. Okay, I'll let you just observe here for a second. Kind of interesting. And then still, I just want to let you look first of all.
And you're like, what, is my sound out? Why isn't this guy telling me what it is? Well, you know, let's just, let's just pretend you're out here. Let's just have you kind of look at this stuff without somebody telling you immediately. See if you can decide some things on your own. good looking stuff huh last thing I'll show you without talking and then I'll start talking interesting interesting Okay, well, what do you think? Like, I haven't seen the Silver Pass Volcanics up close, but I'm confident what we're looking at here is not Silver Pass Volcanics, even though we are on the side of the lake where we we're looking at those from a distance. Instead, we're far enough north along this shore to know that we're in some Mesozoic bedrock. Time for the reveal. We're best to do it. Right over here. These are rocks of the eastern terrain. And I have dim memories, <laughs> vague memories, of uh, our session last fall looking at the eastern. But in the Easton terrain, named after the logging town of Easton, not far away, are a bunch of green rocks. The Easton schist, the Easton phyllite. This looks to be a phyllite to me, a metamorphic rock, in other words. There's kind of a gloss or a sheen. This is... Quite unusual, wouldn't you say? Look at these interestingly shaped blocks that are breaking along some pretty well-developed foliations. Do you see the greens and even the blues that are here? Does that ring a bell? So, without going back and doing my homework, I'm remembering the Darrington Fellite, the Easton Schist, yes, the Blue Schist and the Green Schist of the French Cabin Mountain area, which is right up at the top of this ridge. And you're like, I don't remember ever seeing this kind of rock in one of your videos. Well. That may be true. I'm not sure I have looked at something exactly like this. All this phyllite and this schist. But this guy, which possibly was moved by the alpine glacier that came down this valley, or possibly was tumbled down from the top of the ridge that's above us, this is a dead ringer for that blue schist and green schist that I was showing you last year uh, on one of those Nick on the Fly episodes. So my point is, these green and blue rocks are part of the eastern exotic terrain. And much of this is from the ocean floor that went down a subduction zone. And the point for our program today is that there's a hell of a lot of eastern exotic terrain here and I'll, I'll spend a little more time with you 
with that. But again, nothing across the way. To find the nearest green blue rocks on the other side of the Straight Creek Fault, you guessed it, we got to go 100 miles up by Shuxon, up by Mount Shuxon, and the Shuxon Blue Schist and the Shuxon Green Schist. Okay, so that's the main message of this outcrop. We have Easton exotic terrain right along the road here. If you follow this road, you can come out and collect samples for yourself. Let me just do a couple more. Ooh, I like this one. Eastern metamorphic exotic terrain. Beautiful. I can't stop. It's fun to break it because it breaks on such... Yeah, I love that. You can see the foliation. Okay, so that's the main message of the outcrop. Even this guy over here. Not bedrock, but more float. Oh boy, what's going on? Yeah, who cares? But there was something else to notice, wasn't there? What's this? This thing's about three feet wide and it goes right up through this eastern terrain. And there's a sharp boundary between this brown thing and the eastern. Like the contact is kind of right in here. So this is the green schist and phyllite. Green more than 100 million years old. And same for up there, green, more than 100 million years old. Let's break off a piece of this brown rock, see if we can decide what it is. Just sprayed myself with rock, it's hard. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful basalt, weathered, rusty, fresh as a beautiful black. Look at that, I haven't seen the Tianue basalt look this handsome before. Very impressive. This, this is a squirt of 49 million year old Tianue basalt that squirted into the foliations of this previously existing Easton, as opposed to a dike, a Tianue feeder dike, which would cut directly across the foliation. Let me try to reemphasize that. Here you can see up high, I don't know if I'll scramble up necessarily, but you can see that the foliation of this eastern metamorphic rock is at a very high angle. So the foliation is that way, then it mellows out a little bit, foliation of the eastern green rocks. And then again, if I go to the other side, 
we still have the foliation of the Easton Green Rock. So foliation, foliation, that's the Easton metamorphic rocks minding their own business. And then 49 million years ago, from below, here comes this very mafic Hawaiian-like basalt that squirts its way into a foliation, squirts itself into basically the pattern of this eastern metamorphic rock, as opposed to coming through and cutting directly across it. That's all I'm trying to say. So it's part of the Tianaway feeder dike story, but the geometry is a sill instead of a dike invading this area during the break-off belt episode of the Chalice Magmas. Fun little outcrop, bite-sized, easy to get to. And this is a drive of maybe, I don't know, 25 minutes away from I-90 on a pretty good gravel road, more or less. Are you struggling with visualizing the offset of this stuff? Well, sure, same thing. Jamie McDonald, Florida Gulf Coast University. Nice map. You are here, the Cachis Lake Inlier, colored green by me. If you've got a good memory, I was also looking at some of this Eastern Metamorphic Suite south of the I-90, which is the red line, uh, at Hicks Butte. There's where I live. Here's the Straight Creek Fault. All the way up to the Canadian boundary and beyond. And so these rocks abruptly stop at the Straight Creek Fault. They're nowhere to be found on the other side of Cachise Lake. Instead, we've got to go up here, due east of Mount Baker, Mount Shuxon, and all these green areas here, even the Burlington Hill south of Bellingham on I-5. All this green is part of the Eastern Metamorphic Suite. Does that help? I don't know, like a moron, I, I uh, used red ink so it bleeds through on the other side of the page. Still ticked about that, I did that last year. But this is a more detailed map of our field trip today. Cachis Lake, I drove up here. We're picking up the Easton. So what's down here? Silver Pass, Tianaway. That's where we started the video. But now we can see that this kind of gray area that I may, yeah, I, I tried to color it green with my colored pencils. Shucks and green schist, green schist and blue schist, Darrington phyllite, dark colored phyllite. even up to Pete Lake. I mean, I don't know these places. Cooper Lake, I know. If you're a local, you might know plenty more, but here's the area, the ridge between Cleelum Lake and Kachi. So this is a map from Jamie McDonald, only, only looking at the exotic terrains, only looking at the very old bedrock that is from the ocean, hence the green color. And we know, I'll reinforce what we started with here, we know where the green rocks are that should be on the other side of this fault. They're up by Shucks, and I just showed you that map. But I'm wondering now, for the first time, the Silver Pass Volcanics, weren't they also shifted north? I realized they're barely older, the Silver Pass Volcanics are barely older than the start of the Straight Creek Fault, but still, why don't we have 100 kilometers of offset of the Silver Pass Volcanics? That's my question. 
Thanks everybody for joining us today. What a beautiful morning. Hope you enjoyed learning with me. Thank you. I love you. And goodbye.